What's going on, everybody? This is Nick Lawson from Squad Sports. We're really excited to be supporting the Free Agent Friday series. A lot of great talent out there. Without further ado, this is the next free agent you should be signing with your sports team. All right, well, we're back for another Free Agent Friday, and today I've got Juliana Durzo with me. How's it going? I'm doing well. How are you? Doing really good. Thanks for joining me. Um, unfortunately, I am having a lot of people join me for these Free Agent Fridays, but hopefully things are turning the corner and we'll get people back to work soon. So um, let's kind of go through your um, college experience and um, any degrees that you received so far. So I did my undergrad in downtown Toronto at a school called Ryerson University in media production. I did a double minor in business and public relations. I was always interested in kind of hosting and producing, but I figured if I learned everything behind the camera, that could help me get in front of the camera as well. So I figured that I wanted to build some experience in the U.S. market, continuing my studies because I might want to teach later on. And basically by attending Syracuse University to do my master's in broadcast and digital journalism, that kind of just opened Pandora's box of options, especially considering, you know, the new house school and the name and all the amazing people that have come out of the program. I knew that there would just be a lot more opportunity by transitioning to the U.S. market. So I started my master's last July and ended up doing a lot of it online, considering everything going on with the pandemic. Yeah. <laughs> and when are you set to finish that? Um, I'm, I'm pretty much done. I need to okay. have a full-time opportunity to fulfill the degree, but in terms of coursework complete, it's just pending on like getting a full-time position. And what kind of position are you looking for now? Well, I'm really open, but I would love to, so be in a hybrid role of a host and producer. So with that being said, I love the, the feature storytelling side. So to build stories from the ground up, whether it be for a team a publication, a network, like I love kind of telling the athlete's story beyond their athletic abilities. And then how about location? Anywhere or you need to be in, you know, Canada, <laughs> no, New York? No, yeah, I, I would love to be in New York. My heart, like I love the Northeast. I could take the cold, but also fine to go on the West Coast. I have experience in the LA market as well. So really open to anywhere. Okay. <laughs> At what point did you realize or decide that this was kind of the path that you wanted to take? Um, honestly, it wasn't until I started at SU and I had a mentor who's a sports director, who's this total girl boss, who's an exec producer. She won a bunch of Emmys and basically ran the sports program as well as go uh, produce games on the weekend. And I originally thought I wanted to do entertainment. And she said, come to the sports program. Let me open your eyes. And it was, I produced a, an incredible story that aired on the ACC network. And I was like, this is what I want to do. And the story basically followed a father who drove from Canada to Syracuse every weekend to watch his daughter play D1 hockey. And he was supposed to go to the NHL, but his dad didn't support his dream. So he helped his brother go to the NHL and his brother played for 15 seasons. So, and now my friend who had the story documented is now signed to the NWHL and she's playing here in Toronto. So it was basically full circle. And I wouldn't have never known that story if we didn't take a trip um, home from Toronto back to Syracuse and she just mentioned her dad. Played. And was that kind of your project from start to finish as well yeah. or? So I was the executive producer and then I had someone help me do the videography, co-produce and as well as her she was physically playing on the ice for most of it so it was a little but she helped a lot in the post-production and then I'm um, my mentor Professor Stomsky ended up allowing me to do a live hit on the ACC network and it aired as well as well as there nice how about any other um internships volunteer work or you know other projects you've worked on you know yeah. So I've worked for Variety Magazine over the course of the last three years, more in the entertainment sector, as well as Bumble and Narc City Media. And as of lately this year, I produced a web series called Social Distance. And I spoke to a few athletes. One was an, an athlete who was supposed to go to the Olympics. One was the goalie of the TFC. And just kind of to hear their perspectives on how sports has shifted and what they're doing right now, that sort of thing. That's good. Stay busy. Stay busy. <laughs> Um, how about, what would you say is kind of your biggest asset that you would bring to a new position? I guess, honestly, having the ability to shoot, edit, produce, and be on camera. Like I really enjoy putting it all together and getting those shots that at new house, they really train you to be a multimedia journalist. So having to do it all from start to finish. So I think if I could be like a one person 
asset, I would be able to, to sh tell them, okay, I can do this all. And this is how long it would take and do every form of step of the production. W on the flip side of that, what do you think you need to work on the most? Maybe like not being a perfectionist or letting the little things go because I can work well in a team, but I also can work well independently. So I think that just it will be okay and it will it will all work out but a lot of the the whole thing about content is it takes so much longer to put together than it actually does take to consume so i think just kind of working on that and and maybe not being so much of a perfectionist and it will all, it all turns out i might see things differently than you see things differently so <laughs> what what is kind of like the dream you know the dream job like down the road you know career wise i would love to be seen in front of the camera, but as well as be known for some amazing storytelling skills and the products that I produce. So whether that be on a team side and the team rising above the challenge and being like, okay, that was that girl who's on, who's hosting also produced all those feature stories that aired during halftime or something like that, or even to be in a publication and be on the sports doc side, something even like uninterrupted, I find super interesting, but yeah, I would, I'm super open to all the possibilities of being in a hybrid kind of role that's kind of i mean it's let you be part of every aspect of it and kind of own it yes so sure. um how about how would you define success i from a young age my dad always said to get into a job where it didn't feel like you were working and so i feel like if i'm happy and love what i do and want to go to the extent of you know, not minding to work on the weekends or missing holidays or doing that because it's just, I love like the finished product and love every aspect of it. Then I feel like that is success to get to a point in your life where you're gen lo loving all aspects of it. Money aside, yeah. it doesn't matter. And you know, the cool thing about it is you'll feel like you've never worked. And I tell my kids the same thing. Like you gotta, gotta go with the passion. Um, all right. How about, um, this is kind of like what I always like to end with is like a fun personal fact about you. Okay. So fun fact is that I've lived in four different countries. So Canada, the U S France and Italy. Is that, wow. the, I feel like I'm, I'm, <laughs> is that the most fun fact you've heard? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's interesting. So how long have you lived in each area? Are you, and are you from Toronto then, or are you from overseas? I'm, yeah, so I'm from Toronto, born and raised, but my grandparents immigrated from Italy to Canada through Ellis Island, actually, in New York. So I always, my dad brought me to Italy when I was 13. I fell in love with the country and knew one day I wanted to get back there. So when I was 16, I lived there for five months. Um, I did a semester abroad. And then I lived in France when I was a rising senior. I worked for Variety Magazine. Then they brought me on another contract. So I was there for about two months in Cannes, the south of France. And then most recently in the United States, it's, I moved there last year and recently came back in March to Toronto, but was there for about a, a, almost a year. So what was your favorite spot? Well, <laughs> Syracuse wasn't, a, it wasn't a, an experience. I love, well, <laughs> if you like snow, <laughs> cold weather and cloudy days, it was like, it was probably one of the best times of my life to just be able to learn and balance so many things. It was really my first time living completely on my own and just having to balance meeting deadlines. I was on a scholarship because I was an instructor associate. So I was teaching in the undergrad classes and, and grad classes. So just to be, and as well as producing content, right? So I think just to know that I was able to handle all that by myself and have the American college experience for a short little time was the best time in my life. I wish I could go back. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Nice. I I was just uh, somebody else I just had on earlier today. One of his fun facts was he um, he didn't live in all those countries, but he visited like two dozen countries. Wow. Um, which is cool. I've only been to Canada, okay. so I have some work to do. <laughs> <laughs> where Where in Canada? For, like Toronto. Toronto. You know, Did you like Niagara the Falls? Okay, yeah, like, well, you gotta go to Niagara Falls. It's funny because I feel like Americans are now seeing Niagara Falls on the American side, and I'm like, you need to come to the Canadian side because it's like world's different. It's huge. Yeah. On the, but um, I did as a kid. That's. Did you enjoy it? Yeah, I mean, I was young, okay. so I haven't as an adult, so I need to. Uh, I need to go back. So, 
but no, it was great chatting with you. Um, excited to kind of see how you um, kind of continue to develop your career and, and hopefully we can help get you some exposure and get you an opportunity here soon. Yeah. Thank you so much for doing this and having me on. I, I appreciate it. And you're making such a difference even with the success stories that you're mentioning earlier. So it's nice you take time out of your day to help others. Cause like we were talking about the candidate pool is just so large right now. So it's great. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think, and the, I think the videos have really, um, people are expecting them now every Friday and, um, you know, it's been great. Cause I get a lot of emails from people that I've never even spoke to that are like, Hey, loving the free agent Fridays. Um, you know, when we start hiring, we're going to take a look. Oh. So, um, it'll keep building. So I'll keep doing it as long as I can. <laughs> great, great. <laughs>